This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone. Is my voice is audible? Yes, sir. Okay. So we are here to start up with Excel and Advanced Excel, right? first let me give an introduction about excel okay so why we use excel what is the use of excel where that is used so small history behind the excel first we will see that and later we will enter into the subject how to use excel how to open all these things first on five ten minutes we'll talk a theory about excel history and other things So here I made some few points for you. So first thing, what product is Excel? Excel is nothing but called as what? Microsoft product, right? And then here, whatever we are calling today Excel, whatever we are calling today Excel, previously when the previous uh, like DOS operating system on all was the right, at that time, so very long back, whatever now we are calling Excel, previously it is used to call as Lotus. That is the old name of Excel, that what currently we are using, right? That is previously is used to call as Excel, which is called as previously Lotus. Excel, why it is used? Excel is used for multi-purpose. We use Excel everywhere. So like a master software, which is used in the schools, college, business, corporate, small business, okay, and IT sectors, everywhere we are using Excel. It's a most important software where everyone needs to learn it, right? So Excel is used for data analysis. So what is data analysis means? If there are very large record, very large amount of record, so having that very large amount of record inside the record from the record if you want to filter any records or if you want to analyze some based on some questions so you have some criteria i want a report for that i want to have a filter for it so for this anything you will use excel so in easier way excel will analyze the data and next excel is also called as tabular data what is tabular data means most probably excel will be having full of rows and columns whatever data we create in excel we will make it as a table so that it will be helpful for uh, next upcoming like uh, pivot table slices all these things so mostly excel data are called as tabular data the reason it looks like a table also and third thing is how we call excel files basically we call every file as document but it's not correct so word files will be called as document powerpoint files will be called as presentation access files will be called as database and excel files will be called as workbook what does a workbook contains a workbook contains set of spreadsheets what is spreadsheet so where full of rows and columns will be there. So for example, I'll just show you here. So how to open Excel, I'm showing you right now. So there are three methods to open Excel. First thing, just click on the start button. Just type Excel. And just click on this. The Excel application will be opened. This is the first one method. Again, I'll close this. The one more method is right click on the desktop on empty area right click go to new you can see here microsoft excel worksheet you can click here and you can give a name and then you can open the file this is one more step the final and easy step is and it's a shortcut so in your keyboard from your keyboard press and hold on the start button and press R key at the same time. So I'll just show you the keyboard layout. So you will get understand. So this is the start button. Press and hold on the start button. Press R key, R. 
so automatically run command box will appear in this run command box you just type as excel and if you just click on ok automatically excel will be opened so these are the three methods which are there to open excel the last method i told it will be flexible and easy why because sometimes the user interface may differ in windows itself if you take windows 7 start button will be different this start screen windows 8 will be different full of tiles boxes will come you don't know suddenly where to search so people who have used they know how to use so if somebody is using newly windows 8 so slightly it will be different why right? because when they press start button screen will be totally changed they don't know where to search the program but if you type e automatically on the right side program search panel will come off but if is there any problem like this the interface are different different so then the easiest way is you can use the start button plus r the shortcut and you can give the command excel and you can open the excel application is that clear how to open excel okay slowly one by one i'll go up what is the interface everything next excel workbooks are contained set of spreadsheet and first excel workbook files are called as what workbook i told so you see here first thing is we can take a blank workbook first one i'll take a blank workbook later i'll come and explain all this interface i'll take a blank workbook okay a workbook contains what set of sheets spreadsheets see here sheet one sheet two sheet three so i have three sheets so files are called as workbook a workbook contains set of spreadsheets but here i have three note that i have three sheets as of now okay so now up to 2010 up to 2010 ms office up to 2010 of ms office a workbook contains by default three sheets by default up to which version 2010 okay after that a workbook contains by default only one sheet after 2010 a workbook contains by default how many sheets only one sheet so you may have a doubt i have taken a blank workbook and i am having how many sheets three and if you look the interface it's not looking like excel or ms office 2010 it's not looks like a ms office or excel 2010 so what is the version i'm using okay so before i say that can anyone tell me in the chat box what is the latest version of ms office just use the chat box for any queries so tell me what is the latest version of excel uh 2019 question mark okay any others the latest version of ms office the latest lastly launched is ms office 2021 correct so 2021 is the latest version of ms office clear so how do you check that what version you are having in your laptop okay so just see here i'll just show you how to check what is the version of ms office or excel in your laptop you are having and that ms office software what you have installed how many products it contains so you know basically ms office is a package so once we install ms office we will be having word excel powerpoint access outlook onenote publisher like many softwares are there okay teams many are there but we are concentrating just on excel now once you install ms office in that also multiple versions are there home standard professional like that so few products will few like uh, ms office home will be having only three products professional plus will be having around eight products like that 
many changes are there. So how will you find out? Very simple. See here. Just click on the file. Just click on here on the file on Excel. Open Excel. Take a blank workbook or without taking also you can see the file option. Click on the file and the last option can you see here account. Just click on that. On the right side can you see here. So product activated. I am using Microsoft Office LTSC Professional Plus 2021. And this product contains Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote, Publisher, Access and Teams. Clear. So we are having all these products. So the latest version of MS Office is 2021. And then, and I told by default up to 2010, one, three sheets. After that, by default, only one sheet. So if any of you are having laptop and if you are working with me, please check in Excel. Once you created a new workbook, how many sheets by default you are getting? One, one, yeah, that's what I said. You'll be having one sheet by default. So you, you can have a doubt that how I am having three sheets. So we can make the setup settings like that. Okay, so we can create a setting where minimum one sheet and maximum up to 255 sheets by default. By default. So by default means when I create a new workbook, I am having three sheets, right? I can make it like a 10 also. When I create a new blank workbook, I'll be having 10 sheets or 100 or 200. Like that, whenever I create a new blank workbook, I can have up to 255, up to 255 sheets. Minimum one, maximum that much. So you may have a doubt why I cannot have 256 means, yes, yeah, you can have, but 256 has to be created manually cannot set that settings by default up to 256 only 255 manually 256 if you want you need to click on this plus button to add new sheet or shortcut key you can use shift plus f11 okay i'll give the notes you can take a pic of that later so how do you change the settings i'll tell you first click on the file slightly come down few will be having more or if you will be having directly options based on the screen size you may have options or go to more and then choose the options okay choose the option once you choose the option under general on the right side slightly come down so can you see here include this many sheets include this many sheets how many sheets three i have set it up so i can set 100 or i can set 200 at maximum is 255 if i try to type 256 it is not possible so the maximum by default is 255 so i will need at least three sheets while i'm working so that's why i set it up to three okay so that's the reason why whenever I've taken new workbook, I'm getting by default three sheets. And then let me come to the next point. A sheet contains what? Full of rows and columns. Exactly. So you're seeing a sheet now. I'll take sheet one. So these are full of rows and columns. These are columns. All these are columns. And these are rows. All these are so where a row and column meets is called as what one cell i have a column here and i have a row here so where the junction point is there one cell so where a column and row meets is nothing but called one cell so and how many rows and how many columns are there in one sheet so actually in one sheet 
10,48,576 rows are there. And columns like 16,384. That is XFD. Why I am saying that XFD means? The reason is why? Because the columns are named as alphabets and the rows are named as numbers. So rows are named as numbers and columns are named as alphabets. So still how confidently I am saying that 10,48,576 rows are there. So easy shortcut to check it out. The last row of your Excel sheet. Okay, just I'll just show you keyboard and I'll show you. Hold the control key in your keyboard and press the down arrow. Hold the control key and press down arrow. You'll come to the last. Control down arrow will bring you to the last row. See what is the last row? One zero. 48576 clear 1048576 number of rows and how many number of columns are there same press and hold on the control key click on right arrow it will come to the last column so the last column is what xfd last column is what xfd I told that 16,384 columns are there. So how I am confirming that? How I am declaring that? Let's show you. By default, columns are named as alphabets and rows are named as numbers. It's not a constant that columns cannot be changed to numbers. So columns also can be changed to numbers. But rows cannot be changed to alphabets but columns can be changed from alphabets to numbers okay how do we change simple just click on the file go for more options okay and that so can you see the second option formulas click on that on the right side, can you see an option called as R1, C1 style? So that is nothing but row 1, column 1. I'll just tick on that. I'll just click on OK. R1, C1. Row 1, column 1. So can you see here? First row, control right arrow will go to the last column. That is 16,384. So when both rows and columns are in alphabets, when both rows and columns are in alphabets, the first cell address will be R1, C1, row 1, column 1. Again, if I change it to normal, the default one, I'll remove it again file option formulas r1c1 you can see the first cell of your excel is a1 a1 a is the column and one is the row so can you repeat that one minute i didn't get it uh which one the changing the alphabets to numbers yeah okay i'll repeat once again just click yes, on the sir, file yes, yeah i'll just click on the file Scroll down, see if anything is called as option. So if you don't have, click on more and then go to option. Click on the option. Yes, okay, on the left side, can you see formulas? Yes, sir. Click on that. On work with formulas, if already R1C1 is enabled, disable that so that columns will become to alphabet. Okay. If you enable this, Columns will come to numbers. If you disable this, columns will come to alphabets. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 
Does anyone have uh, any doubts? You can unmute and you can ask your doubts. No problem. So next point will come to, so we have seen a sheet contains full of rows and columns. Columns are named as alphabets and rows are named as numbers. A sheet contains how many rows and how many columns? What does a last column is named as? Okay. And where a row and column meets is called as a cell. And then very important point what we are going to see is, what is the extension of an Excel file? Does anyone have any idea about what is extension? So that is nothing but? Uh, extension is like how we save the document. For HTML, yes, we put exactly. .html. Exactly, exactly. Very good. So extension is nothing but which decides what type of file it is and also through which software or program the file can be opened. For example, any file, so mcc.txt if I give. So mcc is the name of the file and .txt is nothing but the extension. Clear? So like that, every file what we use in computers as an extension. Okay, same like that, what is the extension of Excel file? So there is a small differences in MS Office. The versions has been divided into two parts, older versions and newer versions. So nowadays we are saying 2010 and 13 also older, but it's not uh, separated based on the number. It's separated based on a feature called as XML. Okay, so I'll just show you that. What is that? So office versions are started from very 0 0.1, 0 0.2 like that. But some few standard version means Office 90, Office 92, 93, 95, 97 is there, 2000 is there, 2003, 2007 also is there, 2010, 2013, Office 365. That is only for laptops, special edition and also online also you can use and office 2016 2019 and 2021 so many versions are there like this okay but here there is a separation like this so above these versions are different below these versions are different why because previous all these versions of MS Office was not having a feature called as XML. That is nothing but called as Extensible Markup Language. But after this version, from 2007 up to now, all the versions are having the feature which is called as XML. Previously, it was not there. And now we are having this. Okay, that is the main difference. Based on that only, the extension slightly it has changed. So how, I'll just show you. Any version, any Excel files from these versions will be saved with extension of .xls. For example, star .xls. Star represents the file name can be anything and after the file name, it will be saved with .xls. Simple to remember, xl is for spreadsheets. Okay, so here it was not having XML without XML. So from the version of 97 to 2003, without XML, the extension was .xls and 
dot xls x from the version of 2007 to 2021 okay these are with xml the last x is nothing but stands for xml that is extensible markup language okay so you can see whenever we save a file Can you, we will give a name and we will save the file, right? Once we save the file, I'll just right click on the file, Excel file, what you said. I'll go for properties. So, type of file Microsoft Excel worksheet, the extension is .xlsx. If it is an old one, it will be having dot xls so can you see here type microsoft excel 97 to 2003 worksheet but here you will be not having any names like that so just as a excel worksheet so this is the difference and logo also will be differing so you can see here the logo So this is older file extension, Miss, that is old Excel file, logo, how it looks and remaining are new latest. That means from the seven, uh, like not seven also, seven also slightly older logo only from like 10, uh, sorry, 2016, 19, 20, 21. This and all will be having a logo like this. And then I then slightly come down. So we have seen this XLS is the default extension of Excel file from the version 97 to 2003 and what is from 2007 to 2021. And Excel is also the short key to open the Excel file. That is where start button plus R we will type here Excel and we will open. These are some basic things about excel what is excel basically basic information about excel we can say and the default file name of excel is book one what is that book one means whenever i take a new file okay the new file name will come as book one here you can see the file name so that is book one it will come by default so once you close this and you take reopen one more one it will come as book two book three like that then let's see so up to here just i given a few basics notes of what is excel so now we are going to enter into excel interface and we are going to start one by one everything so this basic information what and all i gave about ms office so and under ms office excel you understood if you have any doubts or anything you want ask you can ask understood sir okay so when i ask can you please repeat the extension okay others not required sorry ma i'll explain okay so yeah basically any files in the computer term it will be having a extension how we have simply to say how we have initial or surname like that right where we will be having at least initial if surname is not that same like that each and every files in computer technology as it's one extension every files for example if you i will show you how a file will be uh, identified like what type of file it is so let us have one example The first one, what file it is? 
it's a notepad file right and what is the second file this is audio if you have few you know few, few may not know and the four, third one is video so how i'm saying all the file names are same Na names are same mcc 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 okay so whenever you double click on any file my operating system that means my windows or my mac my operating system will not see the name the name is for your reference you to understand this is exactly my file only okay so that is you to understand name of the file is you to understand so once you do double click on the file the file will open right name is for you how when you double click for example you will double click on a video automatically the video will be exactly played by any mls uh, like vlc or mx player like that anyone uh, video player how does the computer knows that it has to be played exactly with that particular software means my operating system will not see the name of the file he will see the extension of the file why because whenever any software you install in your computer for example i am installing a software commonly people know vlc uh, i'm just taking example where most of the people knows right that's why mx player two players should have used in the mobile phones okay these are the players which is used to audio video players right whenever for example whenever i'm installing these softwares any softwares example i'm taking vlc or mx player when i'm installing this software inside my computer or inside my system okay they will give a small database to my operating system to my windows or mac saying that here i'm there you to help you out i can able to support any files like .mp3 .mp4 .avi and .mkv many are there but few i know that's it okay they .htrip okay many are there so he will give all the database tomorrow what you will do you may have a file video file we'll just do a double click on that video file okay first my operating system will see what is the extension .mp4 so who is who can support this .mp4 is there any person with me yes so either vlc or mx player first of all anyone may be there or both of them also will be there if any one person is there directly that video will be played by the software if both of them are there then my operating system will not take a decision he doesn't have rights to decide himself so he will give a message to me please choose the one just once or always just once means just only for now that mp3 mp4 file will be played by vlc if i give always from next time onwards any files respected to dot mp4 will be played only with vlc again you may have one more time also again again asking just once always that are because of there are different different video formats like this like this many are there that's why it is keep on repeatedly asking some you would have faced this problems under your mobile phones while playing the video uh, especially like uh, android phones clear so that is nothing but called as extension each and every file will be having their own identity so based on that only the operating system will identify what type of file it is and through which software the file can be opened is that clear what is extension yes sir thank you sir yes sir so next just we will enter into excel again play name starting uh, what i'm going to do is start button plus r i'll just type excel enter so we are learning with 2021 that means i think in the version of 2021 if you have 16 19 20 21 or 13 also not a problem i later will tell you the difference all these three few formulas and few options i'll tell you the what is the differences so first i taken a excel through the shortcut so once you take the excel file through the shortcut this will be your first screen so 
the first one is how to take a blank workbook and right side you can see few things these are called as templates templates means nothing but like a model for example uh, i want to create a invoice in excel i don't know how to create so will i have any like a uh, format or sample piece means yes these are called as that so you can create an invoice sample that is a template or it can be called as wizard also take from that it needs internet connection to download the templates and later you can modify however you want it just the name or item names these things and all you can modify and you can have it as your own okay and then below if you see these are recently opened excel workbooks the right side there is a option called as pinned pinned means you know pinning right in the whatsapp or other chats you would have seen so once you pin it will be there on the top always same like that so every day i will be opening 10 to 20 workbooks so what will happen so few important workbooks rarely only i will open but it's important so i will just pin it i'll just go here i'll pin it so if i open new new also if it is goes down also or if it is goes from the recent list also not a problem in the pinned i would have pinned that from there i can pick it up that is what pinned and if i come to new you can take either a new blank workbook or you can go for templates so slightly you'll be at a brief about all the templates here like business personal planners and trackers list budgets charts and calendars many are there so you can pick anyone and you can go through that and then open you can open your existing workbooks which are already saved from the right side list or you can browse clear so now these are first three important this i'll come back later and let me come back here let me explain you the layouts of excel so this is the excel once i taken a new workbook how it looks but can you see here one arrow mark and one more arrow one more save button so undo redo save this portion is called as qat that means quick access toolbar qat quick access toolbar by default you will be having only three that is save undo redo if at all you want more you can add okay just there will be a small arrow mark click on the arrow mark see to that which you want to add it to that list there is new open email like that i want new so i'll enable new i want open so i'll enable open again i click on the arrow mark i will remove that i'll remove open also like this so only few are there new open save by default three are there only few are there what if you want other than this for example i want this format painter or i want this conditional formatting or any other tools just do a right click on the tool that which you want to add it to the quick access toolbar just do a right click click on add to quick access toolbar So automatically the tool will be added here. How many tools you want, you can add it. Again, if you don't want, right click and remove. Right click and remove. Clear. And then this is name of your workbook. Once you save the file. So you can see the name of your excel workbook and it's an excel file it is showing 
okay and then the latest option which was there in the 2021 is nothing but what you are seeing here the search option okay so what is the important of this is it's very simple any tool that you want to go instead of going to the tab and selecting directly just search and you can select the tool for example i want conditional formatting i can just type as conditional formatting go right you can choose which tool you want to take or else you want merge and center you can take merge and center any tool that you want to use just you can search it here you no need to go to the particular tab and you can take so pivot table i can take like this so you no need to go to insert tab and select the particular tool so there is a easiest search bar easiest way that is search bar just by searching that you will go to that place clear and then this is account so once you purchase the ms office they will tell you to sign in once you signed in that outlook account what you have signed in that email you can see it here and the third one is nothing but ribbon options you click here there will be three options first one is auto hide the tabs ribbons groups everything will be hided so tab commands ribbons it is showing here first you need to understand what is tab what is ribbon and what is commands so can you see here home insert draw page layout formula all these are called as tabs this is called tab insert tab draw tab page layout formulas all these are called as tabs once i click on a tab whatever i'm getting the entire area like this from entire portion this entire portion is called as ribbon so tab tab contains the entire portion which comes is called as ribbon so tab tab contains ribbon and ribbon contains group what is that group means can you see a line okay this is tables group from this line to this line in between whatever the tools are there add ins from this line to this line what are the tools are there that are called as chart tools from this line to this line spark lines so tab tab contains ribbon ribbon contains groups group contains or are called as tools or commands like these each and everything are called as tools or commands And so now you see, I'll click on this ribbon option. Auto ID ribbon. I'll just click here. Everything gone. Automatically the ribbon, entire pan, the top which was there, it has got hided. Again, I'll click on this area. I'll say show only the tab. I just click on the tab. It will show you only the tabs. Home, inside draw page layout like that it will show you only the tabs the last option is show the tabs and commands okay so if what if this goes like this you can just click here you will get that you can use the tool again if you click on the working area it will get hided go up click you can use the tool once you click on the working area it will get hided so at least you want to see just only the tabs so what you can do is you can click on the ribbon options click on show tabs can you see home insert draw page out formulas data review all these are called as tabs 
Once you click on the tabs, you will get again the ribbon. The last option is show tabs and commands. So by default, previously how it was done, everything will come off. Tabs, groups and ribbons. Tab, ribbon and group. So everything will come off. Understood? Then minimize and this is maximize and this one is nothing but called as restore to the actual window again you can maximize it and this one is called as close clear and slightly I'll come down I can see name box yeah this is nothing but called as what name box name box is used to identify the cell address name box is nothing but used to identify the cell address Name box is used to identify the cell address. So what is that uh, cell address? Sir. So one. Yes. Uh, so I still uh, cannot find the option where you can remove the tab and the layout from the top of my screen. So here, this one, uh, ribbon option, sir. I don't have that on my computer, sir. Okay, which version you are using? Uh, the latest 2021 version. It will be there. I will spot that uh, like this. If not there, I will go. I will show you one more method. Right click on that. Any tabs here. Go for uh -huh. customize the ribbon. Sorry. Customize the ribbon. You see here, you will be having an option called as Reset All Customizations. If you do that, if any settings was previously changed, you'll, everything will be reset and you can see that. Because every version you will be having that. Yes, I'll sir. Just fo follow, yeah, follow me once. Right click on any tab. Customize the ribbon. In the bottom, Customize. Reset all customizations if yes and okay see yes, that sir. try to see getting that yes i got it yeah. thank you sir So now next, name box. Name box is used to identify the cell address, I said. So once I selected any one cell, so we need to know what is the address of the cell. For example, this is the Excel. I selected here. I've clicked here. What is the address of this cell? E10. That means E column 10 row. So where a row and column meets is nothing but called as cell, right? So address of the cell is E10. So I clicked here, address of that is J12. So one more advantage of that is, I want to go to somewhere. For example, I want to go for K15. K15, press enter. It will go to K15. Or else, I want to select a range like this like uh, a 10 to uh, c 20 from a 10 to c 20 i want to select so go to the excel select a 10 to c 20 you need, you need to give colon okay press enter a 20 to so a 10 c 20 the entire range has been selected. Okay, so this is a one use of name box. One, you can identify the cell address or else you can reach the target 
by entering the address of the cell. Next is very important this option. Okay, I'll just tell you. For example, uh, I given some numbers. I'm typing some numbers. Done. I selected and just I have written some numbers. I just select the range of numbers. Okay. So I will name this. I will give a name for them. Okay. So what is the use of name means? So let me wherever I am. I am in the third sheet or fourth sheet. Okay. I'll just directly I can pick them from being there. Okay. First, what you need to do? Write some numbers. Or if already you have, you can select the range. Select the range of cells. Come here, click, erase that address and give a name. I just type as MCC and press enter. That's must. You need to press enter key. Then only the name will be taken for this range. What name you are giving that will be taken once you press the enter key. Enter. So can you see here? You can see. Normally it is not taking. When you select the range, it's taking the name. Clear? So now what is the use of that? I'll go for the third sheet. Okay. Being in the third sheet, I want to go to that or I want to select that. Okay. For example, in the first sheet, these are the numbers, right? I want to do total of that, sum of that. Being here, I will not go and select the range. Now, what I'll do equals the formulas we'll see later. If you capture it, I can able to understand it. Understand. However, we'll see deeply formulas, everything. So always we need to start the formula with either plus or equals. Give equals S U M sum open bracket or else what you can do equals S U M instead of giving manually open bracket, you can use the option or key which is called as tab automatically formula will be taken so now instead of going there and selecting the range i can give the name what is the name m c c can you see here automatic it has come okay use tab key or use mouse and select that close bracket enter so you have not went there and have not selected the range. So equals, again I'm doing equals S U sum tab type MCC. Close bracket, enter. Then, so what is the one more use? Suddenly if I'm here, I want to go to that uh, range. So there I want to go means what I can do use the shortcut key control G that means go to okay select the name MCC click on OK I'll be jumped and the range will be selected is that clear what is the use of this name box it's a very important tool Later, you'll understand what is the importance of that, but I'm saying it's a very important tool. Is that clear for everyone? Have any doubts on this? Sir, I tried it out in my version, which is the 2013 version. So, uh, I'll... Which one? 20? 13. 13, huh? Yes, sir. One, one second, one second. 2013 so, version also it is available. 2000... Huh. Yes, sir. So, in that... No, it's I... there. In that also it is there. Yes, sir. So in that I wrote uh, equal to sum MCC close bracket 
and i uh, in the name box i wrote mcc and i entered and uh, in that particular bracket where i had written equal to uh, some mcc it turned to zero okay so first now why it will come you would have returned here and you would have selected some other cell and you'd have given the name first you select select some type some numbers okay select the range of that like this select there are three cursors very important three cursors and next i'll come to that how to use your mouse in the excel i'll tell you okay first select this four cells then you click here erase that i give mcc2 name press enter okay so why that it's coming means already we are having a name called as column name is called as MCC. That's the reason. So we will give a different name. Okay, we'll give a different name. College I'll give. Press enter. So it has taken. The reason sometimes it's not taking by MCC means we have a column header as MCC also. So give a different name. Select the range. Give a different name. Press enter. Go somewhere. Equals S U M open bracket. Type the name. Double click on that. Close bracket and enter. Try. Aram say try and tell me whether you are getting or not. So anyone have others? Anyone have doubt? You are not getting anything like that? Most understood. Okay. Just a minute. Uh, give me one, two minutes time. Yeah. Sir, it's showing a hashtag name question mark. Hashtag name error. Huh? Yes, sir. So that means the name exactly you selected the cells and given the name. Yes, sir. One second. Okay, I'll come. I'll come again. I'll just just a minute. See here, uh, again follow me, take a new sheet, slowly I'm doing, take a new sheet, plain sheet, type a uh, few numbers, like this, take your mouse and select the range, go here, click here, erase that and give your name. Press enter key. Don't forget to press enter. Give enter key. Enter. Then you can see the name. After pressing enter, you can see the name. To reconfirm, again click somewhere outside. Again select the range. See the name is coming or not. Then somewhere you click. Give one equals S U M open bracket. Okay, then type the name what you give, what you give, right? That number, name you give, just double click on that name, close bracket, enter.
Yes, I got it. Thank you. You take? Now, this is name box. Next is formula bar. This is formula bar. Why it is called as formula bar means, see, if a cell contains number, and if I select that, it will show. If a cell contains value, if a cell contains value, it will show the value. When I select that, if a cell contains text, shows the text same way in a cell if i have done a formula okay the output has come by using a formula then the formula bar will show only the formula it will not show you the output it will show only the formula that's why it is called as formula bar if a cell contains formula it will show only the formula not the output or any other value if the cell doesn't contains any formula it shows what does a cell contains whether it is be let it be a text or number it will show the particular clear so now next is in the bottom sheet one sheet two these are sheets if i click on the plus button one more sheet will be added or we can use a shortcut Shift F11. If you are using laptop, use Fn key. If you shift Fn plus F11. Because it's a functional key, few laptops without pressing the Fn key, function key, it may not work. Or else you can just click on the plus button. here so and then slightly come down here you see there are three views one is normal view one more is page layout view and one more is page break preview okay one is normal view page layout view page break preview so what is the normal view means whatever you are seeing on screen now this is nothing but normal view okay so now what is page layout means the entire screen if I take a printout or how much will be fitted in one page if it is a A4 sheet means how many columns will come or how, how many rows will come for one page that will be shown here so I'll just go for page layout first I'll check the page size paper size go to page layout uh, or the size I'll just check what is the paper size letter is there I'll make it as a4 sheet where on the top page layout under page layout on the same okay so I set it up to a4 then you come here click on the page layout once you click on page layout for one A4 sheet, how many columns are coming? And how many rows are coming? 47 may come or 46 may come. 49 is coming. It so depends on the screen resolution. So 49 rows and A to H columns for one sheet. And only in the page layout, you can see the header and footer of excel header and footer in excel it is used rarely but you can see that header and footer in excel only in which layout page layout here 
So what happens? Sometimes you may come to page out. You would have come to page out. Again, you go back to normal view. So you can see a grid line like this. Few will be asking, sir, how to remove that line? Nothing. There is no problem with that line. It's just a guideline. It shows why? Because once you entered into where? page layout. So Excel thinks that you want to know where one page gets end. So you want to know that. So that's why a small grid line is showing there. Okay. Once you save, close and reopen the Excel workbook, automatically the grid line will be hided. Automatically the grid line will be hided. There is no problem with the grid line. It just shows how this up to here one page. Again from here here one page width. That's it. Okay, don't take tension when you have see when you see these grid lines. And then page break preview. What is this page break preview means? Previews only the area used on the worksheet. Remain will be shaded out by gray color. For example, I just click on here page break preview. So now I have not used any area. So entire sheet in gray. I will just click here. Type some numbers. So that means this cell means what? This column and this row. Okay. Entire this range will be visible. Remaining will not be visible. Again here. Can you please repeat? This one page break preview. Huh? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'll take a new sheet. Just go for see. I've taken a new sheet here. Nothing is there. I'll just go here. Uh, page break preview. The last option here. Click on this. Now entire sheet is gray because I have not used any data. If I use any data, only the used range will be visible. Used range means you may think the entire place has to have a record. It's not like that. I just zoom a little bit. I can show you. See here. If I select like this, that is E13. E column, 13th row. Okay. From here, here. That means this entire range. If I select and type anything in this one cell, that is this column and this row. This entire range will be visible. Whatever content is there here, it will be visible. If content is there by default only, it will be visible. If content is not there also, it will be visible. But here and all will not be visible because I have not used any data here or any cells here. So select here, I just given a number here. Enter. See here, here and here. Only this much range will be visible. So you can type inside. Again, if I type here, what will happen? Up to this column will come. But however, already up to 13th row, it is visible. So H column up to 13th row. Up to here, it will be visible. So a page break preview previews only the area you have used. Remaining will be gray. So this is a confirmation. Why that means? So I have sent to a Excel file. It's a very big file. I have more records on that. Okay. What will happen? You will be you will be have using this view. Okay. You will scroll down. Okay. Up to your record is there. Then okay. Again two three down arrows. Then you will say okay nothing is there. That's it. Leave it off. But it's very big, right? Excel is a very big sheet. Again after so much gap again i would have started to type here nobody knows that they will scroll down few like this from here they'll scroll like this much and they'll think okay that's it nothing is there no no more data is there and they'll go for next work okay to avoid that this page break preview will help you out so it will show totally how many pages are there and up to where you are used here so this gives a disclaimer like still you have a data that is one use more than that very important use is see 
I have a data here. Correct? It says this will come in printout of page 1 and this will come in printout of page 2. So I'll click on the file. I'll go for print. It says here how many pages? First page and second page. Okay. Now I want everything to be in one page. So the easiest way you see a grid line here. So left side this is page 1. Right side of this is page 2. Just click and move towards like this. That's it. Everything becomes one page. The easiest you can arrange. Up to here I want one page. Up to here I want two page. See one more example I'll show you. Sheet 2. Okay. There no records are there. Uh, yeah, here I have records. Okay, only one page is there. I'll take some data here also. Three pages are there as of now. Control P, that is print. So here also it is showing three pages. Page one, three records. And page two, one record. And page three, one record. Done. So now, I want everything to be in two pages. So now what I'll do, I'll scroll down and come. See here, page 2, page 4 also is there. I'll just down this arrow. So now, it has become 1 and 2. Again, control P. Print or else click on the file. Go to print. You see, only two pages. So easily, flexibly, you can adjust how much you want for first page, how much you want for the second page, up to where you want first page and second page. So easily you can access and you can customize the range. Is that clear? What is the page break? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, any others have any doubt? on the chat box okay good okay so basically these are the layouts okay still some few basic uh, layout things i need to explain i'll start with that now First thing, you would have seen many, uh, I don't know, many of you would have seen or not seen in the reels or in the shots of you. They will say Excel trick, Excel trick, just by pressing some combination of keys. Right? Okay, it's not like a shortcut keys and all. I'll just tell you that we call as swatches, that we call in Excel, swatch, swatches or swatch. Okay, so what is that swatches means? Very simple. Just by pressing the Alt key. Uh, let's give you the note here. Swatch, that is called a swatch. How it comes means just by pressing the Alt key or F10. If it is laptop, Fn plus F10. If just press Alt key on your keyboard in Excel, you can see the alphabets like this on every one tab. Can you see on the top of all the tabs are the tools, are tools like this. Once just press Alt key, you can see like this. So they will say, uh, for example, uh, on example I will show you. I have written uh, one word. Like this. The width of the column is not sufficient to show the entire text because it is going to the next column and next column also. Whatever the text is there, it has to fit within the column. That means the column has to come up to here. So the entire text should show only in one column. That we say as auto fit. Okay. That we will see later. Just I am trying to explain you 
what how they will show the scratches and all manually how i will do that means manually home tab format auto fit column width so it will come like this how the shortcuts they will show means you can also understand and you can learn that very simple first press alt key so how i went first i need to go to home tab so alt then h for home tab h then i went for format for that o o then auto fit i okay so now i'll select that alt home tab h o i simple okay so fast if you do alt h o i simple for every tool you will be having the shortcut so when you are working manually if you want to know that so press alt key you want to go to insert tab n you want to insert pivot table v so alt n v is pivot table shortcut key alt n v like this so we will not call this as a shortcut key our side we will call this as swatches okay just by following that you can do that so that's what what they are saying instead of going manually they are telling to press the combination of keys okay however it's slightly difficult to remember for everything because for all the tools you can have the combination of keys only few you can remember that's it is it clear what is the swatches somebody would have seen that they will put alt uh, cd you press you will get that automatically shortcut like that so that's manually you can learn it it's not a big matter it's very simple thing just press alt or f10 and then next i'm going to tell you this thing only how to use the rows and columns okay. so rows and columns and other things and all that i say like we are going to learn how to use cursor that means mouse mouse cursor or pointer excel if you may think uh, it's not very simple if you may not get this out don't know how to use also so i'll just tell you how to use your mouse in excel it's very important if not you will do mistake you instead of drag and drop you may move the record instead of moving you may uh, overlap the records many things will happen i have seen that so that's that's why i'm sh just showing you how to use the cursors or mouse in excel so now i'll come back to normal i'll take a new sheet just can you see this cursor what cursor i'm having on the screen now that is nothing but drag and select cursor the general cursor of excel that cursor name is called as drag and select that means i can click and drag and select like this like this like this drag and select cursor Okay, can you see that? So, you, this things you work with me, then you will understand. It's very important. Okay, this is drag and select. If I have any numbers, okay, uh, I can click drag. Don't release the mouse. Click and drag and select it. Okay, now next cursor I have given here. 1 press enter in next cell i given 2 now i am saying please drag and select 1 and 2 i am saying drag and select 1 and 2 1 and 2 i have selected now bring the cursor bring the cursor i am zooming and showing you to this place can you see the green color dot bring the cursor to this place can you see the cursor is getting changed from this position from this type of cursor to it's changing to 
this type of cursor. Okay, once you place the cursor, click and drag now. This is what? How to drag and drop. One more I'll show you. See for example, I'll type Sunday. Enter. Select the cell. Bring the cursor to the corner. This dot. So cursor will change. Click, drag down. January I'll type, select the cell, bring the cursor to the corner, click and drag now. So please tell me if you are facing any problem with this because it's very important. Okay, now we have did one drag and select and one more drag and drop and then we are going to see drag and move. What is this drag and move means? This entire month from the I column, I want it to be placed in K column. Generally, people will do cut, paste. But what I'll do is, first I'll select the entire range. Place the curse on the border of that line. So can you say green border? Bring and place the cursor on the line like this. Click and drag like this. See here. When you place on the border line, you can see different cursor now. This is called as drag and move. This is drag and select. This is drag and drop. And this is drag and move. Click it and move wherever you want. So basically these three are very important. I just mention the cursor name also. Okay, one is drag and select dragon drop third is dragon sir can you show drag and move one more time sir yeah i'll just show you see first dragon select so there is an outline border, green color border, right? How much is it here? This, again okay, like this and like this. So just exactly place on the line until get this different symbol. Like, like looks like anchor symbol. Up to getting that symbol, just slightly move the cursor on the line. Then click and drag like this. Place on the line, on the border, not in the middle not in the out or not in this place exactly anywhere on the line green color line click and move like this okay thank you sir so anybody have doubt using these three cursors i'll go for next another two cursors okay so next cursor if somebody says you please select the entire column how will you select? You cannot select like this. Like this. Because there are 10,48,576 rows. So you cannot select like this until last. So the easiest way is just place the cursor on the alphabet. You can see the down arrow like this. Can you see? Down arrow. It's a symbol. The cursor symbol has been changed to down arrow. Once you click, simple. The entire column has been selected. The entire column has been selected. So from top to bottom it have been selected. Okay. So here. See here. When I say click on edge on the column, J I column, the last row, see, entire it is selected. Same way, when they tell you to select entire row, just 
click on the number. Just click on the number so that entire row will be selected. And then select entire sheet. How will you select entire sheet? So in the next cursor, if you understood how to select a column and how to select a row, you can drag like this also to select multiple. Click and drag down. Click and drag right like this. Okay. Now to increase the width. So I, I want to increase the width of the column. Then what you do, place the cursor between the two alphabets. J and K is the right. Place the cursor between the center line here. here like this. You can see the different character. Click on. Done. But one more advantage is here. We previously did one thing. What auto fit column width? We went here automatically. What is the length text in this column? There the column has to end. So instead of doing all the tangamas, very simple thing is select this, place the cursor here, just do double click. Just a double click. That's it. Okay. So, what is the lengthest text in that column? The column will be moved to the end. See here? If it is like this, I want auto fit the column width. Just double click. Your row height means your double click. Manual means like this. Auto fit double click okay and if you want how do I equally increase height and width of the column then place the cursor in this corner click like this increase the height width, sorry width and increase the height. How? Just here in this place. Click. Or else use the shortcut key Control A. Sometimes you use Control A, only the data will be selected. Use twice or thrice so all the records will be selected. Okay, again you can adjust like this. Equally it will be adjusted. If you are feeling using the shortcut key is different or difficult, just place exactly here. Click exactly here. Again, adjust here. Understand? So now already we have seen first three cursors. This is how to select entire column, how to select entire row, how to increase column width, how to increase row height. So 4 plus 3, 7 different cursors. So here I, and the arrows will come like this vertically. Here it will come horizontally to increase the column width. So down arrow, right arrow for different different for rows and columns. Is it clear for everyone? Please let me know if you have any doubts. Okay, you have, you have message that. Sir, your voice is breaking. Couldn't I could repeat. Okay, sorry, I have not seen. Swatches, huh? Okay, I'll repeat it. I'll repeat it. 
Okay. Others, anyone have any doubts? Swatches, I'll repeat once. I have not seen the message just now. Now I'm seeing that. Uh, any others? Any doubts? No? Please let me know in chat box if you have. Okay. So only the swatches is the doubt, right? I'll just tell you. See, very simple. Now, if I want to do anything, I have a table. Okay, I, want, I have some numbers. Uh, what I'll do? Okay, I'll take one more sheet. I'll type here one. I just drag like this, and then there, I'll drag like this. Okay. I want to create table. This is a range. I want to convert this range into table. Shortcut key is Control T is also is there. If I want to do something different, anything else. Okay. So now, instead of going and clicking on table, okay, what I'll do, I'll press Alt key. So if I want to convert this into table, I'll go to Insert tab and I click on table. Okay, select one cell, Insert tab, table, then I click on OK. Like this, I'll convert. Instead of that, shortcut key, Something you have seen somewhere. How some combination of keys, not shortcut key, swatches. How to use? Press Alt key to go to Insert tab N, then T, Enter. Alt N T. So, so for whom it will be helpful? If you ask me, I'll tell you simply. People we who use keyboard very well. So I will type closing my eyes. I know all the characters in my keyboard. I will just type closing my eyes. For them, if two, three times they see that. So, taking the mouse and going there, they will feel it takes more time instead of using this shortcut. Because they know they will use keyboard very fast, right? So, just combination of three keys is nothing but fraction of seconds where you go and take the mouse. By the time they will type off the keys. For them, it will be useful. So for that, you should know to use keyboard very well. That means closing your eyes, you should know how to type. So when you know all the keys, then Alt N T. That's it. Just fraction of seconds, Alt N T, the table will come. I think combination wrong key I pressed. Alt N T. That's it. Press enter. So if you are able to use the keyboards like that then it is possible. If not, it is not possible. Okay, is that clear? Okay, next. <clears throat> Any other messages? No, understood. So let's start. Next concept. We are going to see a file tab. Actually, officially we call this as backstage view. There is nothing but whenever you click on the file, whatever you are seeing this screen, 
will be called as backstage view. Here already we have seen three. Home, new, open. How to use the name and how to create a new and open. So now remaining we are going to see few important topics from here. So which is nothing but called as backstage view. I click on the file. What you are getting is one. I just click on first thing. I want to tell you to click file. Go info. Click on file. Go to info. On the right side you see. Under info you are having an option called as. What is the name of your workbook? What is the name of your workbook? That is MCC1. And below that, we are having documents. What is that documents means? That is nothing but where the file has been located. That means where I have saved the Excel file, right? Where it has been got saved. It has been got saved in documents. Okay. So I want to go there. Yes. If I want to go there, if I want to reach there, I want to see the file. Just click on the documents. In this version, it's not available. So 19 or any 13 version, you'll be having additionally four options there. Okay, lengthy will be having four options. So where you can, ah, yeah, now it came. See here, open file location. Info. I just said it has been saved in the place of documents. I want to go there. I want to look the file into that place. Just click on open file location. So it will show you the place where the file has been saved. Clear. And next important thing is this is a workbook, right? So we are going to see next three concepts. Protecting your workbook. First, we are going to see how to lock your entire workbook. That is protect workbook will say. And then protect sheet. And then protect cell ranges. Only few cell ranges. And fourth one additionally we are going to see. How to protect your structure of the workbook. Workbook structure. Okay. These are the four concepts next what we are going to see. First, we will see how to lock the workbook. Then sheets. Then inside the sheets, only few cells I want to lock that means only few cells has to be encrypted and remaining should be unencrypted this should not be locked and next totally we are going to save our workbook in which case i will not we will use this i'll tell you next first thing if somebody trying to open my workbook so directly it is getting opened Okay, so directly it will be opened. So now instead of opening directly, I want to give a password for this. Okay, so where if you enter the password, then only the file should open. So how to do that? Just click on the file, info, protect workbook. Can you see here? 
encrypt with passwords. Require a password to open this workbook. Just click on that. Type the password. One, two, three. I just given one, two, three. Can give anything password. Uh, one, two, three. I've given. Understand the password. What you are giving. You should remember that once you forgot, there is no option to retrieve it. That means there is no option of forget passwords and all. Okay, remember whether it is case case sensitive or note down the password somewhere else. Once you forget password, it cannot be retrieved. Okay, I given two times same password. I have confirmed. Then I click on save. Then I just click on the file. I close the Excel file. Now again I will click on the file. I will open the file which I made a setting just now. I just open that. Now you see it is asking a password. It is asking me a password to open the file. The password what you have given. So please enter the password. I will just give us 1, 2, 3. Okay. Without entering the passwords, you cannot open the workbook. This is how to lock your workbook. Or how to encrypt your workbook. The second, I have how many sheets here? One sheet. I'll add one more sheet. I'll add one more sheet. Clear. Now three sheets I am having. I want to lock the third sheet. How do I lock the sheet? Only the third sheet. So that no one should type anything inside my sheet. So for example, if I type anything here, it is taken. So user should not able to type or insert any data inside my sheet. They are not allowed to type any data. They are just allowed to see the record. Okay. So now how do you do that? So just click on the file, go for info, click on the protect workbook. The second option, sorry, third option you see, protect current sheet. Click on that, enter the password. One, two, three, I given again same password and I'm giving. So slightly look down here, allow all users of this worksheet to select cells and to select unlocked cells. First only, I'll make you one thing clear. We are, in the beginning only, we had a talk about what? Excel files are called as workbook. A workbook contains full of rows and columns. So a workbook contains plus set of spreadsheets. A sheet contains what? Full of rows and columns wherever a row and column meets is called cell entirely in my excel everywhere only the cells are there so whenever i lock my sheet in the background individually every cells are getting locked you need to understand whenever i lock my sheet in the background Excel locks individually every cells because cells is what? Full of rows and columns. Wherever row and column meets is called as one cell. The all the cells together only we are calling this as worksheet, spreadsheet. So deeply we see each and every cell we are locking. It's not one thing. Okay. So now select lock cells, select unlock cells. Two concepts are there. I'll come to this later. Now just we will lock the sheet. Okay. Re-enter the password. One, two, three. So now the users cannot type anything. They cannot type anything. Okay. But they have an option. What? They can select my content. They can copy my record and they can take it. Okay. 
have locked for what they should not edit and i have something and i don't want to give the data to them also okay then i want the users should not able to select the record why if they select they can do copy because all other options are disabled here all other options are disabled they can copy that and they can paste in new sheet so i want to disable the option where they have option to select that okay how do you do that for that first i will unlock the sheet i can do right click on the sheet i can unprotect or else go click on file info on the right side sheet 3 unprotect enter the password go back now i can type you can see here i can type here okay i can type so now users they should not able to type that means they should not able to insert any content inside my workbook moreover they should not have any options to select my content and to copy that so now what you do just right click on the sheet protect the sheet now i'll just disable the option the users are not allowed to select my locked cells users are not allowed to select my locked cells so however when i lock my sheet entire cells will be locked i told that's why i told previously workbook is what sheet sheet is full of cells once i lock every cells will be locked so once it locked means i have said the users are not allowed to select my locked cells so they cannot not even select one cells from my sheet as of now so i given the option i disable that give the password one two three okay again password one two three I give it. okay now you see i cannot click i'm not having option i'm trying to click but i cannot able to click so i cannot able to click how can i copy understand so i cannot place the cursor inside my sheet inside the sheet so i don't have option to select the record so because i'm not able to select i cannot copy or cut my record is that clear so first one would be slightly easy just give password and remove password this one here i told two different points please let me have a clarification whether it's understood or not understood understood so third thing in the same thing i am coming now again i'll unlock the sheet and protect the sheet one two three so now what i want the user should able to edit only this much the user should have permission to edit only this much area outside they don't have permission to edit so as already i told by default there is a lock in all the cells there is a lock is hanged on all the cells unprotect i'll do first yeah there is a lock hanging on all the cells so once i say protect sheet all the cells are getting automatically locked so before only i'll select the cells which i don't want to lock and I'll remove the lock from there. So I'm saying don't lock these cells. Now, first select the cells range, go to format. Can you see lock is grayed? That means already lock is there. So I want to remove the gray. That means I won't remove the lock. So now in that area, lock is not there. You can see the gray has went off, which was back of the lock symbol okay again here if i select empty one cell 
it is there. So now what happens when you lock the workbook, this and all will be locked because the lock is enabled here. But for this range, it will not be get locked because I have removed the lock. So now I have selected a range, right click, protect the sheet, enter the password. Now they are able to select here, they are able to type the records here, but outside they cannot type anything. But inside they can select. Is it clear? Next option, I will click on file, the last one. So we have seen how to protect your workbook, how to protect your sheet, how to lock the cell ranges and how to unlock that and workbook structure. So what at what one stage they will feel, see uh, they are given a workbook to me. So I have given, uh, I, so I, or I have given a workbook to you. We'll think like that. I've given a workbook to you. I have locked the sheet. So where you cannot type anything, where you cannot copy, where you cannot edit. I'm just telling to look at it. Okay. And you have a thought of copying the record. You cannot copy that. You cannot take the sheet, nothing else. So end of the stage, what you'll do is you'll get frustrated and you want, what is that? I'll delete of the sheet itself. We are given the file. I'm not deleting the file. I'll just delete the sheet and I'll say, I don't know what happened to the sheet. Okay. So now I should be careful in that part also, right? So before I'm giving that, what are the sheets? I don't want to show you. What are the sheets? I have very important data that I don't want to show you. And I don't want you to add new sheet or delete my existing sheet or uh, unhide my important sheet records. Okay, I will lock all these permissions. That is called as workbook structure. Okay, so how to do that? Okay, right click. Sorry, not right click. How to do that? File. I am going to lock the structure. Lock structure means only the outside. So what they cannot do means See, when I do right click, what are the options are there? Insert new sheet, delete, renaming, move or copy. We'll see all this later. Hide like this. So they cannot access any of these options. They cannot add new sheet. They cannot rename new sheet. They cannot delete new sheet. They cannot do anything. Clear? Just a minute. One second. Sorry. So now see here file info protect workbook. You'll be having an option called as what? Protect workbook structure. So what it says prevents unwanted changes to the structure of the workbooks, such as adding new sheets, deleting, renaming, etc. Okay, I'll just click here. One, two, three. One, two, three. So now I do right click, I cannot insert a new sheet, I cannot delete, rename, move or copy, tab clear, hide, unhide. If I hide any important record, you cannot unhide that. You cannot see that. But some of them have a doubt, you have hided. So you may use that hided data or records in that sheet, in the hided sheet, to this current sheet uh, as a formula for any other things. So it will work means, yes, it will work. The, if the sheet is hided and if you've taken any reference of the records from the hided sheet using some formula here means, 
exact 100% it will work here but you cannot see the sheet or records that's it clear that's it we have completed the how to protect your workbook how to keep your workbook safe from others this is called as workbook management okay the entire topic name is workbook management So this is the last topic sir, what I covered. Yes. Yes. So will you be sending the notes? What? Will you be sending notes? Hello? Hello? Uh, no, I'm I'm not I'm, I'm not hearing you. Okay. Sir, will you be sending notes? Notes, sir. This you wanted this notes? Uh yeah, will we have an exam? Yeah, you'll be having an exam. If you uh, want separate yes, notes, sir. I'll send. Okay, I'll send the notes. But as of now, take the notes that I'm taking. Just take a screenshot or take a note of that. Whatever important notes I'm giving that. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, the recordings also I will send. What? Yeah, attendance I have taken here. Yeah, attendance list I have taken from the app. Okay, I'll just... Around 40 members attended today. I have the list of the names. So you're logging with your original name, right? Which is there in your college. Exact yes, name, right? There I'll just are, check uh, many once. Many names which are repeated. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll just go through that. So today the time is up. Okay. Uh, I'll create a name list. I've taken the short uh, name list who have attended. Okay. So next class, I'll call the attendance names. Today's I have, I'll make attendance list and from next class, I'll call that. Today's whoever present, I have attendance list, which will be automatically generated by the software. Clear? Yeah. So is there any doubts? Whatever we have covered today? No, oh, sir. Okay, please if, let me know if you have any doubts. Well, in between we got logged out like one or two people but now we are already like after that we are we were back so attendance won't uh... yeah i've taken two times i've taken two times okay sir thank you sir okay so by Excuse everyone you'll we'll see in the next yeah tell me when is the exam for this course uh, this is the first class right yeah We'll see later. We'll discuss about that. Okay. Okay. So uh, we'll see next class. Okay. We'll continue the topics on the next class. Thank you, sir. Bye, everyone. We'll see the next class. Okay.